Hey brothers and sisters, Cameron here. It's been a minute. I have been super active on two platforms besides YouTube lately because I've been just trying out some new stuff. Instagram, I am active and I post almost every single day, as well as TikTok. If you haven't been on TikTok, TikTok is crazy. There's quite a few actually, um, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Mormons, um, ex-religious people on there like myself, atheists, and people who still believe. Gotta check it out, follow me there. Um, I put up hilarious like memes type thing. If you haven't heard of TikTok, it's not just for kids. It's like, it's not just for like nine year olds. There's hilarious, it's a meme generate, hilarious stuff on there. Plus there was a lot of memes that I felt were missing from the ex-Jehovah's Witness community and I was like, well I might as well experiment and do this. Anyway, for the main point of why you're here, on February 7th and 8th, 2020, I can't believe I'm finally saying that, 2020. I thought we'd be having like floating cars and shit by now. Um, there is a documentary coming out on Oxygen Network on paid cable. I don't, I don't have cable, so I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna get that to you and watch it myself and probably like get a trial or something. That's what I did with the Hulu thing to watch the Leah Remini episode, the episode zero where she interviews Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, they have one for specifically the Jehovah's Witnesses called The Witnesses. I'm sure you've seen videos on it already on um, exposing the hidden documents that Watchtower is hiding involving things like rape, murder, assault, child abuse, that's the big one because that's close, near and dear to my heart um, as a abuse survivor and in the Jehovah's Witnesses and someone who's trying to push uh, laws for change for um, two bills that we've been working on with the CCLA, the California Civil Liberties Advocacy Group, at the Capitol uh, here in, I live in Northern California and it's close by. So those have been huge for me. I was actually interviewed for this documentary uh, last year in Oakland. The Center for Investigative Reporting with Trey Bundy is not that far of a drive from me. So we decided to go with some homies um, that were from the CCLA, just to provide some political backup, because I'm more of the face. I'm not the person who um, knows everything about it, because they have like seven or eight years of political just experience on me, and I'm, I'm new to this. I've only been getting into politics and trying to change laws and change the culture of not just being a vlogger, but an activist. And, and all these churches hide child abuse, the Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, all of them. And that, you know, that work has been coming out. We've been putting a lot of effort into that in the last year and being very careful and strategic about what we do because we want a good result for everybody. Um, and that's what I was interviewed for. So that was kind of crazy. Trey Bunny is a cool guy. He wanted to let me know that like, you know, he actually gives a shit and he's been working for the last five years. Um, I'm gonna try to link the trailer or play the trailer. I'm sure everyone else is like talking about it. I haven't even seen it on YouTube yet of what else everyone else is saying. Tons of people are interviewed for it, tons of other abuse survivors, but I'm really excited to talk about it because um, I was interviewed for it and I'm really proud of the work that we're doing. So, but who knows, I don't, I don't know if I made the cut. So this February 7th and 8th, it's a two-part series. I don't know exactly how long it's gonna be. Wow, there's a, there's a, there's a dead, dead-ass squirrel over here. <laughs> He's dead-ass dead. I'm really excited about it because this is shining light on things. Like Scientology has been famous for hiding their documents on of the same shit for years. And now it's actually starting to finally come out. So I'm excited to get back on YouTube again. Um, seriously, if you haven't, fo follow me on Instagram and TikTok. That's where I'm the most active. I post there almost every single day. TikTok is also a really like experimental place. So I also talk about like relationships and dating and um, social situations that, and a lot of it hints towards XJW life, but it's not. Like a lot of those hints and things only ex-Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Scientologists would actually get. I was interviewed for it, like it was pretty cool. We drove down to Oakland, got to see the office. Everyone was really nice. Um, the producer's really nice, the crew was really nice. I ended up actually getting to know them as people. They, they actually give a shit and they enjoy working on those types of documentaries. I don't know if, like I said, if I made the cut, so we're gonna find out together and I'll find out some way of getting a ton of DMs and messages from people like, I live in Switzerland or I live in the UK or I live in Brazil, like how can I see this? So I'm gonna try my best to make it um, available for maybe on YouTube. Someone's gonna do it, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out together. What's up? <laughs> and um, none of this is new. I've listened to Trey Bundy's podcast before. It's on SoundCloud. I'll have, try to have it linked in the description so you can check it out. It's about an hour long. I went to the gym and like, I just speed walked on the treadmill for like an hour and just consumed it in and I even like, 
brought back so many emotions. I even cried for like a little bit afterwards. It was just such an emotional thing to learn that, you know, Watchtower lost the case and they still refuse to hand over the records of just child abuse, not the murder and the assault and all this other crazy shit. So it's a lot. There's a lot going on. But I'm very excited. I'm actively shooting and vlogging YouTubes again and building up that portfolio. So you're going to building up all that stuff. So you'll be seeing that again soon. It is cold as shit right now. I mean, I'm in California, so like 50 degrees is cold as shit to us. <laughs> the next thing, I had an idea. Um, when I first woke up from the Jehovah's Witnesses, I spent a year, almost a year about, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just getting over being sick. I spent almost a year still claiming to be Christian, and I went to a ton of churches, a ton of uh, mega churches, small churches, um, LDS even, and I went to uh, non-denominational churches, and I asked them the same questions that my atheist Bible studies had asked me growing up as a Jehovah's Witness, because they had always made the most sense to me. None of them could answer my questions, but I made the big mistake. I, I shouldn't even say mistake. I shouldn't be so harsh on myself. I didn't vlog it, because I was doing it as a personal search. New Year, 2020, a lot of people are wondering, like, how can you go from Jehovah's Witness to Christian to atheist? And I'm agnostic atheist because I'm willing to question, question my beliefs and I'm willing to, um, you know, check myself and then and, and reevaluate things because who's no, who knows how I'll feel in a couple of years. Right now, no one's able to answer my question, so I'm sticking with this. And I was interviewed for the Jubilee Do All Atheists Think the Same, which at the same time, you should go see it. But pretty much, yeah, at least the ones in that group, because they were hella cool. Evan from an Atheist United group down in LA who was there. Um, Ryan, hey, what's up, Ryan? What's up, girl? Um, was like the coolest Jewish girl I've ever met. But we all put our ideas together uh, and talked. There's, there's a bunch of others too, but put our ideas together and we talked about our beliefs and how dangerous religion is and how it can be. And I've gotten to the point of, you know, I did that personal search and journey for myself but how would you be interested if I grab this camera? I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, I have no idea. But I grab this camera, I might need a friend to help me, or someone to help me film this, but do that again. Go to more carts, go to JW carts, go to Christian carts, because there's plenty of those. Go, and here's the best part, to those churches again, to those mega churches, maybe do some interviews, or just bring in the, you know, the camera and like ask the questions, set up the interviews or something, and let them know it's gonna be filmed, and be like, hey, this is, this is why I feel the way I feel, and I have no interest in becoming a Christian. So these questions can be answered, but if you can answer them, this is why it makes me feel uncomfortable to believe in the Bible because of all the, the God's evil actions, you know, the rape, the murder, the genocide, the slavery, the hate and violence against women, like the list goes on and on. Uh, it's, it's become a concern to me that believing in the Bible is a form of, uh, you know, it's a book that was written for a form of to control people. And it comes down to, because it's so hateful, it comes down to like, it's it's a concern for me is like, yo, this is, this is a mental health issue. Politics, Quran, Bible, Scientology, all of that aside, this is a mental health issue about controlling and manipulative behavior on innocent people. And that's what pisses me off the most. So that's why I wanted to leave it up to you guys. What do you think? I have no fucking idea how to do this but I'm gonna figure it out as we go along over the next year, and maybe this will be a continued rotation, you know, like, I don't know, we'll introduce these videos and drop them. I wanna do more cart crashing videos, all that kind of stuff, so it'll take more work and time and effort, but I think it'll be fun, and it'll be a way of me confirming my beliefs or questioning them if I learn new, new information, but also sharing that along with you and the journey, because what I've learned, I thought, you know, I got to the point, a year and a half in, I thought I'd had gotten to a point where I was pretty solid and then I became an agnostic atheist and that changed and then I started getting heavier involved in politics and now I'm questioning myself and I wanna share that journey with you. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. The bands, these XJW Freedom is Worth It bands, um, I don't know if you can see it, I'll get a close up shot in a second. Uh, Pre-order has closed. We had a bunch of you guys express some interest. Like I made this band for myself just to be a cool thing, be like, hey, I'm proud of what I am and who I've become now and I'm embracing it because it's a part of my journey and I'm authentically feeling the shit that I need to feel. If you wanna get one, um, you can get on a sign up list. If I get enough people sign up for it, we're gonna charge a few dollars for them and right now we're only shipping domestically. Like I haven't even shipped off the first order yet. I'm excited to vlog all of that. Um, got a website going and all that stuff, which was, I didn't know how to do any of that shit, but I figured it out to be proud of who we are.
because we came from an extremely abusive background with extremely abusive people and we were taught the bad communication, the manipulation, that these toxic people and behaviors and beliefs were okay and they're not. And I'm really excited to, to bring this new information forward because I've become, I went from a beta male with very low self-esteem to an alpha male with very high self-esteem and confidence. And I wanna share that with the community because I noticed that, you know, the old scripture of sheep without a shepherd, that's well, happening all again. And I don't want that to continue to happen. I want to be known as the ex Jehovah's Witness that gave back the most. I'm not just a vlogger, a TikToker, and a YouTuber that does memes, but I also want to get involved in like mental health. I want to start speaking. And there's so much shit that I want to do for probably the rest of my life. So come along with this journey. Let me know what you think. Brothers and sisters, it was really good seeing you again, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.